Hello, year two. Welcome. So this is our maths video we're looking today for our flip classroom. We're looking on counting the twos, fives and tens. So let's get straight into it, shall we? Get yourself ready. OK, so when we're, when we're doing our counting, we always want to think of it as we're counting and we're grouping and we're grouping. Instead of counting one at a time, we're going to now bring two things together. We're going to group them or put them in a set of two, a group of two. So let's have a look at this. We've got some counters. We've got one young lady down there, Whitney, who's about to do the jumping. And we've got Jack over here. So let's have a look. So as we count in twos, we're going to bring two counters over into our place value. And instead of go, counting it as one, two, we know we've put them in a group. We've counted two. And you can see that Whitney's made her jump. So then we're going to move it again. We've got another two. We've then counted two, four, six, eight, ten. And each time we're counting in twos, we're doing them as groups of two, but we're putting it into our place value, um, our tens frame, my apologies, tens frame. And each time, rather than counting one, two, we're just going to count them as two, four, six and we're counting them in groups of two let's have another look at another example so we've got how many ones have we got here now rather than me counting each one i'm going to group them into and move them into my place value so i'm going to into my into my uh, tens frame my apologies <laughs> let's try again into the tens room so we're going to drag over two and then we're going to count it as just two drag over another four and another six, and then another eight. And on our number line at the bottom there, you can see you're going to be making two, four, six, eight. We're going to be jumping each time into the number line. Let's look at another example. So socks are a great example for twos because you never wear one sock unless you're a little bit of a, a, a strange person. Oh, you only got one leg. Now we're going to be counting in twos. So if you look at socks, you on, on our, our 100 square, but it's only going up to 20, we've got two pairs of socks. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Now we're going to come back to this 100 square and how we've highlighted the two, four, six, eight, and ten. Because something very special about those numbers that are in the two, that, that when we're counting in twos. So let's keep going. What number do you reckon would be next? Maybe have a quick think. Talk to your teddy. I don't know if you remember that one, but talk to your teddy. What do you reckon? Well, it'd be 12, 14, 16, 18, and then 20. Let's look at the next one. There are 20 socks. Now, when we're counting fives, it's exactly the same. We've got, we grab five, we start from zero, and we make that jump to five. We don't have to count each one, one, two, three, four, five. We do a group. We've got a group of five there. We go five. We had another group of five straight over to 10. Then we group again. We say another group of five. We've got 15. And it's almost like five at five at five each time. Now, I know we know times tables, but times tables is remembering three times five is 15. For this, we're not doing that. We are understanding that three lots of five makes 15. We're remembering that each of those is worth five. We're putting them all together. We've got five, then we've got 10, then we've got 15. And then finally, we had another one, we've got 20. So four lots of five, four groups of five make 20. Now, if we look at it like this, we've got four groups of cars here. And in each group, we've got five. We've got the orange group, the blue group, the dark blue group, and the yellow group. And there's five of each of those cars. 5, 10, 15, 20. Now, just have a think. What do you reckon those next numbers would be? Well, if we drive five more cars on, we've now got from 20, we're going to go over to 25. And if we were to drive another five more cars on, we're then going to go from 25 to 30. Have a think what do you reckon the next lot could be? Well, let's drive another five cars on. And then we're going to go from 30 to 35. 
each time we're adding five more, we're having a group of five, rather than taking ages for us to keep uh, counting each one, we're gonna add it all together and jump jumps of five. And counting in tens is exactly the same. Each one of these boxes contains 10 lots of eggs. So we can have a look. We've got 10 in each of the boxes. They're all exactly the same. So there are 10 eggs in each box. How many boxes are there? We can count one, two, three. We've got three boxes. So then how many eggs are all together? Rather than us counting each individual one, we're gonna just do jumps of 10. 10, 20, 30. We've got 30 all together. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but it's also a little bit fun as well. When we look at a hundred square, we've got so many numbers on there, going from one all the way down to a hundred. Now, if you look at our two times table, I've put two as a blue counter on each number. Now, I can't see any yet, so let's work out some together. Starting off, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Those are our two times table, our two groups. We're looking at groups for two, and we're going to keep going. 12, 14, 16, 18, and then 20. Now, have a real good think. What do you notice about each one of these numbers that I've put a blue counter on? Have a think. It's a bit tricky. It might be something to do with the either the end number. Have a think. Maybe pause the video if you need a bit more time. So what, we've look, what we're looking at here is the first line is two, four, six, eight, and 10. Now, the second line is just underneath it in a column going down. We've got 12. 12 ends in a two, like the line above. 14 ends in a four, like the number above. 16 ends in a six, like the number above. 18 ends in an eight, like the number above. And 20 ends in a zero, like 10 above ends in a zero, which means we can keep following this pattern of two, four, six, eight, and zero, and we can follow it to the next col the next row, and the next row, and it goes all the way down. So if it ends in a two, ends in a four, it ends in a six, an eight, or a zero, we know it must be part of a group of two or in the two times table. And we can follow that going all the way down, all the way to 100. Doesn't matter that 100's got three digits now, it still ends in a zero. So all of our two um, our numbers that go into groups of two, um, pardon me, all the numbers that go into groups of two all the way from one all the way to 100. Now, if we get rid of those for a minute and we have a think about what groups of five would look like, we're going to start off with our usual five and I've put these in green counters. 10, 15, 20. And this would keep going just like our groups of two. It doesn't end in a two, four, six, eight, or a zero now. Our fives are only on two spots on each row, but it ends in a five or it ends in a zero. So if we keep going, we've got 25 because it ends in a five. 30 ends in a zero. And then each time we're gonna go all the way down, we can follow those columns going down ending in fives or ending in zeros. So if you have any number going all the way up to 100 and past, if it ends in a zero or ends in a five, we know it's in the five times table or can be grouped into groups of five. Now let's look at the tens. The tens are put in a yellow counter. We're gonna start off with 10. 10 ends in a zero. 20 also ends in a zero. 30 also ends in a zero. I'm not sure if you can see the pattern here, but we're gonna keep going all the way down that one column, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. They all share one thing, which is the all end in a zero, which means you can group all of these numbers in groups of 10 or find them in the 10 times table. And that's a fact that any number with a zero at the end of it means it can be grouped into groups of 10 or in that 10 times table. Now, if I'm to show you what it looks like all together, you might find this quite interesting. When we look at all of the counters all on the board, you can see we've got the two, the four, the six, and the eight are the only ones that are 
in that two times table, that two, groups of two. And you can see the five column going 5, 15, 25, 30, 35, 45. Oh, my apologies. 5, 15, 25, 35, 45. They're all in their own column because they all end in a five. But the most interesting of them all is the very end column. You've got a blue counter because it ends in zero and that can be grouped into twos. So 10 can be grouped into twos, the 20. You look really carefully, you've got the five counter there as well because five times table or groups of five can end in a zero. And then you've got that 10 times table or groups of 10 that also end in a zero, which means this column at the very, very far right, going all the way down the 100 square, are all the twos, the fives and the tens when we're counting. I thought it was really interesting to see that there's that crossover and it's the only column where it's going to cross over. Thanks very much for listening. We're going to be doing a lot of work on this next week. So you need to be really quick. I'm not saying you need to learn all your two fives and 10 times tables off by heart by Monday. Well, what I am saying is you need to make sure that you are really familiar with grouping in twos and counting, grouping in fives and counting and grouping in tens and counting. If you can learn those times tables alongside that, that's absolutely fine. But we're looking for the skills of being able to group into those amounts. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a good day and I'll see you later. Goodbye, everyone.